Hello, Nevlin third graders. Today is Monday, May 18th. Um, hope, hopefully you had a great weekend and uh, spent some time outside and being active. Uh, this week, our new book is called Wide Awake. It is um, a fictional story about the Fox family, and we have read many other books by the Fox family. Um, this book is mostly focused on Roxy. The title Wide Awake tells us that Roxy is having a hard time falling asleep. So I want you to think about um, times in your life when it's been difficult to fall asleep or you've had bad dreams. And what do you do if you wake up in the middle of the night or you go to bed and you simply can't fall asleep? So think about some things that you do and then think about what Roxy does. Another thing that you'll notice in the book is that there are um, clocks on each page. So it tells us exactly what time it is and how long this whole process takes Roxy. So Wide Awake by Faye Robinson. It was very late. Mother and father were in bed. So the time now is showing us that it is 9.30. Andy was fast asleep, but Roxy was wide awake. She looked at the moon. She watched Andy sleep. She looked at the cracks in the wall. So 15 minutes have passed, so it's now 9.45. Mother, Roxy called. Mother ran into the room. I can't sleep, Roxy said. Will you read one more book? Maybe then I'll fall asleep. So now it's 10 o'clock. And the first thing they're going to try is to read Roxy a book. Mother read one more book. Now go to sleep, Roxy, she said. Roxy closed her eyes. She flopped onto her back. She rolled onto her belly. She flopped onto her back again, but she just could not fall asleep. We call that being restless, and you can see by the picture she's rolling around. The time now is 10.15. Father, Roxy called. Father ran in. I'm thirsty, said Roxy. Maybe a glass of milk will help me go to sleep. I don't know if you've ever heard of the idea of having warm milk. Sometimes that helps people fall asleep. Father got a glass of warm milk and Roxy drank every drop. Good night, Roxy, said Father. Go to sleep now. Now it's 1030, so an, an entire hour has passed. Roxy pushed her blankets off. She pulled them back on. She pushed them off and pulled them on. Then she threw the blankets on the floor. Mother, father, Roxy called. Mother and father both ran in. Try counting, Roxy. Count as high as you can, said mother. Then start over, said father. I don't know if you've ever heard that sometimes people recommend counting sheep when you can't sleep. Now it's 11 o'clock, so an hour and a half has passed. And Andy's fast asleep. Roxy started counting. Mother and father went back to bed. Soon the house was very quiet. Then, mother, father, mother, father, Roxy shouted. I counted to 100. I did it 10 times. That's a million, I think. It's really only a thousand. Andy came into the room. Why is everybody up, he said. Now it's 11.30, so this has been two hours that Roxy's been trying to sleep. We're all wide awake, said Father. Let's have a snack. Andy, Roxy, and Mother sat down at the kitchen table. Father made a snack. He's making some toast here, and it is 11.45. Everything's ready. He's got the jam and the toast, and it's 12 o'clock. Have some toast and jam, said Father. Thank you, said Mother. Thank you, said Andy. Look who's sleeping. But Roxy didn't say a thing. She was fast asleep. So now it took her two and a half hours to fall asleep, but she's fallen asleep at the kitchen table and everybody else is awake. So kind of a problem. So I want you to think about the book um, and your own life 
Think about a time when you had trouble falling asleep and talk about what you did to help yourself get to sleep. It could be the same as something Roxy did or it could be something different. So tomorrow when you listen to the story a second time on Tuesday, I want you to then write about a time when you couldn't fall asleep and tell me what you did to help, um, to help yourself fall asleep more quickly, okay? Last week we worked on compound words. We um, changed, we took a compound word, two words put together that make a new word, and we took the end off and made a new word. This week we are going to take um, the end off and you're gonna tell me what you're left with, okay? So for example, the first word is airport. If we take port off, say the part of the word that we're left with. Airport, take off port, we have, should have said air, everybody. We take off buddy, what should we be left with? If you said every, that's correct. Notebook, if you take off book, you're left with, should be note. Bedtime is another compound word. Take off time, we're left with, should have said bed. Basketball, take off ball, and we're left with, should be basket. Haystack, take off stack, you're left with hay. Pancake, take off the cake, you're just left with, you should be saying pan. Last one, toothbrush, if you take off brush, you're just left with, and you should have said tooth. Another thing that you could do this week if you'd like is to see if you can find or come up with some of your own compound words. Remember, two words put together to make one new word. Have a great week.